Hey, how's she going, boys? Mike here. Welcome back to Grapey's Workshop for, I hope, what's going to be the final episode in the uh, All About Small Engine series that we've been doing. It's been a long time getting to this point, and I appreciate everybody watching and staying patient with me. But, uh, you know, I, I, was going, I was enjoying this series, so I was taking my time going through it. And, you know, as I was going through it, the pressure was building and building as whether or not this engine would start. <laughs> I sure hope it does. Let's see if it does. We're going to put the air cleaner on next, so we need another uh, gasket for that. The back side of the air cleaner box, uh, and then this gasket here sort of matches up with that. Uh, there's little pins on this with holes in the gasket, so that you can, the gasket will be retained on this plate once I install it. So that's good. <coughs> so taking the back of my air cleaner box, and I'm putting the gasket on here and I'm just going to place, press it down on those locating tabs just to hold it in place. Don't need any uh, kind of uh, gasket maker or glue or sealant on this because it's just uh, an air sealer for the carburetor. So then that goes up in here. Oh, the other thing is this uh, exhaust gas recycler has to plug in the back of the air cleaner box at the same time. So then it just a couple of bolts hold it in place. So we just snug those down. Uh, this is our throttle linkage, so I'm sure that goes in this hole here. Something like that. And then that'll come back and hook up here with my governor arm. I'm not sure how that's going to go just yet. Okay, one thing I'm going to do here before going any further is I'm going to take this governor arm off. I guess I put that on too soon. Put the linkage in it. And then put the governor arm back on. So, not much for that. Okay. We're getting there. So on the back side here, this will go on, uh, there's kind of an uh, a protrusion on the bottom here that fits into this hole. Something like that, and then that'll go like that. And that keeps pressure on that brake disc that's against the flywheel, so that's where that goes. You have to sort of uh, pry the back of this away from the uh, engine to take the pressure off this while you tighten the screw in. Just to, to make sure that the brake is not on while I'm working on it, I'm just going to Draw this together and put a tie wrap on it. And that'll keep uh, the brake off so I can turn the flywheel. Okay, uh, when I was putting the carburetor back on, I put this plate on and then I mounted the carburetor. Oh, everything was going together pretty decent, eh? Uh, then when I was starting to put the cover on it with the pull start and put the heat shields on, I found this little heat shield here. Uh oh, I forgot to put that on. This fella goes before this uh, carburetor mounting bracket and throttle control and everything bracket. This piece goes on here and there's a little spacer right there, if you can see that. And then this will mount over top of the intake manifold, being careful uh, that all the linkages are free still. So then this bolt goes in here and this bolt goes in here. 
to re-secure this uh, bracket. So I had to do a little back step in there because I forgot this uh, heat shield. So we took all that off, got that back on, we'll just torque these down a little bit. And when I say torque them down, I'm just tightening them. I'm not sure what the torque should be, so I'm just going to tighten those up, bearing in mind that they're going into some cast there and you don't want to over torque them because you'll strip them. Alright, once that's in place, then we take our little o-ring again, put that over the intake manifold because we need that o-ring to make a good seal between the intake manifold and the, in, uh, the outlet side of the carburetor. So this is where the air cleaner goes on this side. This goes towards the intake manifold. Uh, there's two spacers that go on here as well. So there's one already on that bracket. The other one stuck to the carburetor when I took it off. So I'm just going to slip the carburetor on there. But before I do that, uh, the throttle lever and governor lever go in here. Like that. Now, this engine uh, on, the, on the lawnmower model that it came with, it had no throttle control or no choke control. It's all automatic. You just start it and it runs. Okay, So it's more or less governed off the governor, the speed of it. So that's just... So then we take these. And also I noticed that when I was putting the cover back on, didn't have enough bolts. The ones that hold the carburetor on, if you can see here. Alright, there's a little shoulder on it right there. So these are the carburetor bolts. So then the other one with the shoulder goes on this side. All right. Oh yes, look at that. There's another screw underneath here. All right. It's good when you're uh, reassembling, I guess, to check for leftover parts and pieces before you get too far into it. <laughs> okay, so now we can put the uh, cover on with the pull start. So that just sits in place like so. So I need one, two, three, four bolts for it. Okay, now there's one other piece. This little shield here, this goes in the side. All these shields are important, A, eh? uh, because, because this is an air-cooled motor, we rely on the flywheel to draw air in around the engine to keep it cool. So it draws the air around the engine, blows it out through the top. So that's why we have that heat shield there, so that we can direct the air in around the cooling fins. We block off as many ports at the bottom of the engine here as we can, so that the air will get drawn up and uh, Keep the engine a little bit cooler. All right, now we can put this uh, air cleaner base on. Want to make sure there's a gasket there. We want to make sure that that's uh, seated properly. And then just snug those down. Okay. Uh, I think we can put our oil fill tube in now. So that just locates here. There's an interlock on the top of it here that hooks on the uh, shroud. So that goes down like that. And I think this screw will hold that in place. This is just a small screw with a, with a shoulder on it again. If you can see the shoulder there. remember to put oil in it. Uh, now what can I do? Uh, I can put the muffler on it I think next. So I go back to my gasket kit that I bought and there's a gasket in here for the muffler. Uh, 
these bolts have locking tabs on them, so I had bent the locking tabs down so that I could uh, uh, loosen them. So now that just goes right on here. I got a lot of oil in my muffler. I don't know what's up with that. It'll burn off, I guess, eh? And then I'm going to try and put these tabs back in place. Okay, so this is the plug I'm going to use. It's a Briggs & Stratton plug, but it's equivalent to a Champion RJ19LM. I think it's time to put a fuel tank on it. And those are just hand tight. There's a shoulder on those bolts as well and the shoulder comes up tight against the casing so it doesn't crush the uh, fuel tank. This is the old fuel line. So don't think I'm going to use that guy. We're going to... Uh, you know what? In order to make this easier we're going to go back to taking parts off again. I'm going to take this uh, air cleaner base off once more. Now I can get access to the uh, fuel inlet here. Alright, let's try it. So this goes on here. So that went on there pretty good. Slide this little clip up here. Take this connector tube off of there too, just try to get some more clearance. Just like that. And then we can put this tube connector back on. So that doesn't look too bad. I wonder if I should have a shutoff valve in there. Would that be a good idea? Uh, maybe. Later. <laughs> now with our uh, gasket still in place, we'll put our air cleaner base back on. And for the third time, <laughs> we'll tighten those up just half ways tight. So a brand new air cleaner. So the air cleaner goes on something like so, something like so, and something like so. here the bottom of the gas tank and I was wondering I had this nice little spacer I was wondering where that went it just unbelievably it fits right in here and then I had this one long bolt with a shoulder on it where the heck does that go how about that eh? it fits right in there Alright, so I made a little uh, base plate here, bolted the motor down to it in three places, and then uh, put it on this uh, sawhorse and clamped it down with some C-clamp, so it's good and solid. I'm going to add, uh, I've got 500 milliliters here of uh, 10W30 oil. It's just ordinary motor oil that I use. I just put it in this little container to have it pre-measured. So that shows full. So that's good. I'm going to go get some fuel now. 
give her a little drink. There ought to be plenty. We're getting close. <laughs> any leaks? I don't see any. Try and prime it here. You know what? I'm going to take the air cleaner off while we start it because I may have to shoot some uh, uh, fuel in the starter. No signs of any fuel there. I'm going to just spray a little in the throat here. Don't forget now this is the uh, old carburetor and I never tried to clean it. Here's the first pull folks. Are you ready? Front man, start your engine. Nothing. That ain't good. I'm going to put some carburetor cleaner in it. <laughs> Stand back. Gentlemen, start your engines. Oh, oh, oh. Then. <laughs> it started. Oh my god. <laughs> Sell your stocks and bonds. It started. Uh, anyways, it, it's, it's smoking like a 16 year old here. And uh, the uh, I think there was lots of oil in that muffler when I put it on. I'm not sure whether that's what it is, but I think part of it is also the assembly lube because I had slathered the cylinder and everything, top of the piston and the the valves and everything with assembly lube. So that could be why it's smoking so bad. But you also notice there how badly it was hunting. And I think that's the carburetor because I never put the new carb on, remember? That's the old carb that I tried to clean up. Well, obviously I didn't do a very good job cleaning that up. But hey, it runs. That's unbelievable. I stripped that engine down, put it back together, and it ran. <laughs> Is there anyone out there more surprised than me? Boys, oh boys. The miracles of the workshop. It started. Oh, oh man, saw your stocks and bonds, boys. It started. I cannot believe it. Oh, all I went through with that engine, and it started. Anybody can do it if I can do it. So don't be afraid of small engines anymore. And uh, say, having said that, you know, if you have a small engine and it's not just quite working right for you, you know, you see, you see what I've done with this engine. You can do it too. Get out in the shop, tinker, tweak. Tune, you know, do whatever you need to, but you can fix your small engine. There's nothing to them. <laughs> I say that now because it started. <laughs> Anyways, hey, if you're new to the channel, I'm so glad you dropped by. And uh, hey, if this is the first video of mine that you're watching, check out the playlist. I'll have it up here, uh, and you can see the whole series about putting this small engine together. Sorry it took so long, but I was just getting into it so much, I didn't want to miss anything. And I hope you got a little something out of it. I hope it helps you in your shop if you're working on your small engine. Thanks a lot for watching. Stay safe, everyone, and we'll talk to you soon.